Hey YouTube, what's going on? It is Jax here back with another video, and today we have a super, super special video. If we scroll down in the global tournament, you can see right here, whoa, actually, 49th place finish right there. Did my badge update? I thought I finished 50th, but we do have a top 50 global tournament finish, number 50 right here. My first top 100 in really anything, especially in global tournament, I've always done bad in it. And then we popped off and we got my top 50 using drill bridge spam. So we're going to go ahead and hop into some replays here of me getting my top 50 here. We lost twice against mini mentor. I'm not going to share those games just because I played those absolutely horribly. Um, I don't think it was, I don't even think it would be worth like showing how badly I played there. Um, basically what I just did was I kept screwing up my cycle and allowing him to get free RGs and not getting any counter push off of it. But we can go ahead and come down to the game that got me to 50th place right here against Hunter Dean 2. So obviously we were having a mirror matchup here, but we both have arrows instead of barbell. This was on purpose. Um, there were some mortar bait players queuing around me with minion horde. And so I put in a uh, barbell just because mortar baits kind of, or I'm putting arrows for barbell just because mortar baits kind of a difficult matchup. Um, if you have the barbell because you don't really have a great answer to the minion horde. So, I was just going to make sure that we were able to go ahead and be able to counter that. Um, I didn't intend on sniping anybody. I just wanted to make sure that if I queued, then I would be okay if I played that matchup. So, he goes for a bandit at the bridge. He all went for a draw first play, which is not a great move with this deck in my opinion. We go for an Ewiz right there. And the way we did it was we let the Ewiz, um kind of just wait there. We let him like go as long as possible without spawning in, so the bandit only smacked him once. And it was a really nice interaction there that he was only took one bandit hit and had a bunch of counter push value. So that's something you can guys can try and replicate too, but it's kind of difficult to pull off a little bit. Um, you can also do it just as long as you want and get two hits off pretty easily. So I go in for a Dark Prince. We're going to keep our cannon cart alive. He's going to have to arrows it. And he does arrows it, so I don't go in for a drill. But he doesn't play a very good Ewiz there, and our Dark Prince is able to charge. I think he's panicking a little bit. I'm not sure how well he plays this deck, but he was definitely a little bit uncomfortable. So I just go in for arrows, and that was a mistake on my end, because now he can go for a drill bandit, and I don't really have good answers in hand. You can see my arrows are four cards out of cycle, my Dark Prince three. So I go in for an Ewiz, and we just go for a Mother Witch here, try and get something on top of this drill. Unfortunately, we don't get anything on the Mother Witch dies, and so the drill is going to get some damage, but our bandit is able to kill most of the goblins there. So only a slight damage disadvantage there going into double. And we have a slight elixir disadvantage. A really nice push on his end. Um, he knew my cycle very well there, but he didn't get too much damage. We were able to defend it pretty well. So the next thing up is going to be to try and win the mirror battle. The mirror matchup. So the mirror matchup is going to come down to two different battles. There's going to be one battle at the tower to kill my goblin drill, and there's going to be one battle at the bridge to try and overwhelm support. So my intention here is to go and win the battle at the bridge so that I can go ahead and win the battle at the tower. I go in for some arrows. Dark Prince charges onto the cannon cart. We, our cannon cart is still full HP. We're able to go in for an Ewiz. He goes for a bandit. Ben is going to dash onto Dark Prince, but now we have two cannon carts, and now we are really winning this bridge battle. So we go and have the bandits die. Cannon carts are going to die. One cannon cart is going to go ahead and die. It's going to help lock onto the other cannon cart. I go for a drill. He's got a Mother Witch down, but he's very low on Elixir right now. We're able to kill his Ewas with the help of the Dark Prince and the cannon cart. Fireball comes in. Arrows are going to come down and kill off the uh, goblins, but the cannon cart is there to finish off the tower, and that's going to be a good game. He's just not even going to make another play, so we're going to go ahead and X out of the replay. Really nice knowledge. My knowledge there, or my intention in that entire match, was that I had knowledge that he was not going to be able to win the bridge battle after he cycled that Mother Witch, and that our goal was going to be to try and win that bridge battle the entire time. I didn't care about getting Goblin Drill damage. Every time was going to be about winning that uh, bridge battle, and that is what we did. So, going into this game, I didn't know what he was playing here. I was still using Barbell, as you can see. So, um, he's going to have Spear Goblins, and so I was thinking, okay, Spear Goblins are a decent matchup, it means Wall Breakers, it means Bait, those are really good because we have the Mother Witch, Cannon Cart, E-Wizard, we have plenty of answers. So I go ahead and just Fireball this Goblin Gang, I don't really have a great cycle, um, and I would just like to Fireball it because if you Fireball it, then it's going to force out something else from the opponent, and um, all of my other cards I didn't, I wanted to keep until I was aware of what he was playing. So with the Rascals, I was able to guess probably Mortar Bait, um, because not really much else uses Rascals and Spear Goblins. So, and Goblin Gang. So, 
He goes in for a mortar, I go in for a goblin drill, and I use this goblin drill placement every time I go in for the goblin drill. And the reason I'm doing this is A, because it's going to hide behind the mortar now, so it's going to be in the mortar's blind spot, all the goblins there. And if he plays anything and I want fireball value, I'm going to be able to get it. So we go for a mother witch, and then we go for an Ewas here. He was hovering that fireball. We were able to go ahead and kill most of the minions, but two of them are still alive. Luckily, the tower is going to be able to finish off the miner thanks to the piglet pulling the minions back. No damage taken from them. That's really nice for us, because that would have been really scary. Minion Horde is definitely very scary, especially since I wasted my fireball on that goblin gang, which maybe not have been the best idea. But we just go for a bandit to cycle in the back. We're going to try and get the game moving. Um, he's going to go for a really late goblin gang. I'm not going to fireball it this time now that I know what his deck is. We can just reset with the Canic Art. He's going to go into for a defensive mortar here. And so I think I set up for a push. Because what I want to do is I want to get something on top of that tower. When he goes in for the defensive mortar, it's not going to get any value if I play the goblin drill in the area. So I go for a um, I go in for a goblin drill on tower. I go in for a mother witch as well to help out. Unfortunately, the mortar does lock onto the mother witch. And she's not able to spawn out enough piggies to kill it before it kills her. That would have been really nice if she had. Um, but I am going to ewas all this just so that we can get a little counter push and also make sure we eliminate all the stuff including the minions and everything else. I go in for the barbarrel because I don't need the barbarrel at the moment. This matchup is not super important for the barbarrel except for in that use case scenario. So he's going to go in for minor spear goblins. I go in for a bandit and the mortar is going to lock onto the bandit. Maybe not a best bandit placement. I could have played her out of range. Um, but we also go in for a fireball and a goblin drill or as fast as we can. Kennecart does stay alive. It's going to lock onto the mortar and help kill it. Always going to that placement, and that's really good. I want him to start guessing that that is where I'm going to go every time. Because it is good if he guesses that is where I'm going every time. If he guesses that I'm going there every time, that means I can start predicting fireballs and getting really nice spell value. Go for a kind of a panicky bandit there. I was considering e wizzing, but I didn't want to use it immediately. He goes for a log, so I soak my cannon cart in the back. And I do that because if he goes in for a log, he can't fireball log the cannon cart and get value. So since we have everything going in, I go in for another drill, and then I go in for a fireball. And since he plays the gang right with the mortar, that's the fireball value I was looking for. We're able to go in. Maybe an overcommit, though, as you can see. He does have enough for a minion horde. I go in for a bandit as well. Going to try and go ahead and just get some nice value off of that. Uh, he's going to go in for a minion horde, and it's going to go ahead and kill off the bandit. He's got to save up for his fireball, though. This was kind of bad on my end. The minions are now really far alive, and he knows it. Luckily, the Dark Prince was able to tank long enough for me to get out my Ewas, and we have a 1 HP advantage. This is going to be a really, really close game going into this final minute and a half. So, cycling for the Cannon Cart in the back. He doesn't have his spells in hand, but I need to reset. So, I go in for a Cannon Cart a little bit higher. I probably could have gone in the back. Now, I'm going to set up for a big push. Um, we're going to go in for a drill, but I'm also waiting to make sure I try and have as much Elixir as I can. Unfortunately, I go in for the drill right as he goes in for the Minion Horde, so we don't have enough Elixir. He's going to have to Fireball our Mother Witch, though, and he's going to take it. He's not even going to hit the tower. We're able to go ahead and Fireball, and now we're going to get some damage. However, one Minion's going to come back and bite me. Now the tower is only at 26 HP more than his, and now it's even lower because of that minor shot. If that minion hadn't been there, that would have been a really nice 200 damage lead right there. It would have been a very comfortable pocket. I wouldn't have won, but it would have been a much more uh, peaceful situation knowing that. So I go in for a bandit in the back so that I can get this fireball value because I can hit the rascals and the mortar. We go in for a mother witch. He's going to be ready with the fireball. And then I think I go in for a high Ewas. Yep, I do go in for the high Ewas. Not a great high Ewas, though. Luckily, it stays alive for just long enough. And then I can go in for a bandit. He's going to go in for a defensive mortar. We're down some damage still. We need to keep going in for the goblin drills. And then I think I pre-fireball. Yeah, I do pre-fireball this area. We do hit the mortar, and we do hit some of the spear goblins, but he wastes his log, which is good for us. Then we go for a cannon cart, and the cannon cart's going to do a nice job killing everything. Ewas to reset, and damage is literally within... 30 HP. So I go in for a bandit. We have to get back to our drill. We have to go in, get damage ASAP. He goes for his first offensive mortar. I go in for a drill fireball. I know he's not going to be able to get enough damage in time. Mortar even shoots the wrong way. That's going to be game. He didn't have enough for a fireball. And we walk away with the win. And uh, 32 wins right there. So I was really happy because I was like 27 and 2, and then I got to 28 and 2. I think I was 30 and 2, which is really good for me considering I've only ever made it and lost out at 27 before. So that was really nice. Um, next, I want to show off this lava game because I played it very poorly at the end, but we were still able to walk away with a really, really clutch win. So this is going to be a really fun replay for you guys. So he's playing Lava Hound with Flying Machine, Inferno Dragon, and Cage. I think he maybe had a Valkyrie. I can't remember, though. Uh, we'll figure it out soon enough anyway. Um, I was not sure what to expect out of this guy. I didn't actually really know him. 
So we're just going to hit sit for a minute, and I'm going to fast forward. I forget how long it takes for us to make a play here, but I do want to go ahead to the point where we do make a play. So he goes for a lava first play. We go for a dark prince in the back, and then I think I go in for a kind of card. And he's actually have barbarians. I forgot he had barbarians. I thought he had a Valkyrie. Um, so I go in for a low Ewis here, and he's going to do a nice mega minion for me, which is really good because since he goes in for this mega minion, I'm able to go ahead and go for a fireball. And I wait, and I just try and make sure I hit the flying machine and the mega minion. If I had missed either, this would have been a really poor defense. So I go in for a um, bandit right now because I know he wants to minor, but I also want to get damage if he miners. So now we can go from low mother witch. He has to minor the um, bandit, and we were able to defend the push and also get some mother witch piggies out of it. If I hadn't gone for that bandit, he would have minored, and if he had predicted my mother witch placement, that would have been super bad. That defense hinged on a lot of things. But since he goes for the inferno dragon, I know he's pretty low on elixir. I wasn't sure exactly what he had, but he does barely get the cage down in time. So now my thoughts here, okay, so I need to kill the inferno dragon and the brawler so i'm gonna play my cannon cart slightly in the lane of the brawler so that it pulls the inferno dragon while also killing the brawler and now i'm just gonna go in for a goblin drill because i believe i can finish off his tower especially since he goes in for the mega minion now he has no spells in hand and that's gonna basically be tower down because he's not going to do anything about it goblins are gonna go ahead and spawn out so many goblins on the tower and we have a very nice one to nothing lead that's gonna be really good because now i can worry completely about defending this push while also going for a second tower i don't have to commit any more elixir to taking that first tower so I go with an E was in the back. We're going to set up for the defense here. So I'm hovering my fireball. I'm like, all right, we got to kill this flying machine. And then disaster. Wait for it. We miss the flying machine. A wide open flying machine. Now he's got the biggest counter push you've ever seen in your life. Going to go for a cannon cart in the back. I want my cannon cart to be able to kill stuff. Go for a goblin drill. Flying machine locks onto the tower, which is not good. So I go for an Ewis to reset it. He kind of wastes the mega minion. I was going for a barbell to try and get back to the fireball. He goes for another lava hound. We're able to go ahead and fireball away all the pups. Tower locks onto the inferno dragon, which is really nice because the lava hound is not going to do the damage that he's looking for. We go in for the mother, which we're going to able to kill the uh, inferno dragon. And piggy tanks for the flying machine. Fireball comes in, but the bandit is still there. Bandit's going to tank for the flying machine as well. We're able to Ewas and fully reset it. 69 HP on the tower. 24 it actually dropped to. And we walk away with the win. That would have been very sketchy if it had gone any farther. Somehow, after playing pretty badly, we're able to clutch out the defense. And that was just really, really nice. So, the last game I want to go here is against Looney playing Graveyard. And this is a little bit farther down. It wasn't very high. I think this is my 28th win. So, I was at 28 after I won it. But I think I played this game phenomenally. I feel like I just completely dominated this guy. And I really wanted to show it because I was very proud of this game when I played it. So uh, let's go ahead and just... Oh, I actually barbelled pretty quickly. So we go for the barbell. He goes for a Dark Prince. So I'm obviously going to counter that with my Dark Prince right now. I don't want to waste my Ewas just until I know what he has. Dark Prince is a bit safer. It'll also present some nice ground counter push. And he doesn't have his uh, Dark Prince in cycle if I ever want to drill. However, my drill's not in cycle. So not really a thing there. Uh, I go for an Ewas in the back, and this Ewas is going to get pretty high on the map, and he's going to fireball it. But I reacted to this. I reacted to that, and I put the bandit in front. I was so proud of that play. He gets down the bar barrel, but barely in time. We were able to save our Ewas, though, which was really, really nice. And now we have a nice little elixir lead. So I go in for a cannon cart. Let's see. He's going to go in for a cage, I believe, pretty low. So I'm just going to go in for a goblin drill to tank for the cannon cart so that my cannon cart can go ahead and take out the cage and any other support. So actually, okay, no, I don't. I go in for the barbell on the opposite lane. So he's going to go in for the dark prince, I believe, uh, on high. So I just go for a dark prince. He wasted both his bomber and his uh, dark prince. However, I can't really punish him because that is a ton of units that he's got coming back at me. So we just play an Ewas there to kind of overkill. I want some counter push, and counter push is what we get. So I go in for a bandit goblin drill here, I think. I do that soon. No, okay, I still have to counter the baby dragon. I, I, I'm not even following my own rules here. I go in for the bandit here. Excuse me, to counter the baby dragon. Uh, it's going to tank for a little while. Then I think I go in for a low cannon cart here. So that the cannon cart can tank for the baby dragon and then go up and kill the cage on my side of the arena. And then what I do here is I go in for a mother witch and then I also go in for a bar barrel. I wanted to win this bridge battle and also maybe get some counter push. Cannon cart does kill the bomber. So now he's going to have to dark prince this bar barrel and hog. That would have been a ton of damage if he had not. And that's good for me. So now I go in for an Ewas, I think, or maybe a Dark Prince. I can't remember which. Okay, Dark Prince, just so that I can get some ground counter push, knowing that his cycle's kind of weird without his own Dark Prince. And then I go in for a Goblin Drill, and now I go 
uh, in the same lane as the Dark Prince. So he's forced to go for a cage, and now he's spending so much elixir, but he's not going to have enough to counter push because he's got to make sure he can go Graveyard Fireball to kill my mother, which he's probably figured out that I have it. So I go in for a Bandit here. He's going to go in for the Bomber. Unfortunately, our Cart does die, but he goes for a pretty bad Dark Prince up here, and now he's going to Fireball. So since he uses the Fireball, I can't really spam because I still have to counter that Baby Dragon. This is going to be a game of damage, and I need to make sure I have most of it. So we go in for a Bar Barrel in the opposite lane. I don't want to play too much into this Baby Dragon. Uh, we can go for a Cannon Cart to tank for the Baby Dragon, then we can go for a Bandit. He's going to go for a Cage, and then I go for the Bandit in the far back right behind my King Tower. He goes for a Bomber, and then I think he goes for his Dark prince as well um and so i go for my dark prince he goes for his dark prince in the other lane so soon i go in for a drill uh drill bandit knowing he doesn't have either of his counters in hand and it blows this game wide open so nice really nice barbell there kills the cage before it can hit my dark prince and then it also spot stops the bomber before it can hit the dark prince which is really nice so here i go in for a cannon cart to pressure him opposite lane uh, I kind of screw up my bandit there, but we're able to go in for an Ewas and protected mother which i believe yes we do we get a piggy out of her um He's going to not do anything. We just go for a barbell and a moment on top of the bomber. Actually, I, th I think I go in the left lane. No, I go in the uh, left lane with the Dark Prince. We go for the bomber or with the barbell a little bit low. And barbell is going to get a shot on cage, but this cage is so high. Now I can play my cannon cart right there. It's going to be able to support my Dark Prince if he anything goes into that lane to kill my Dark Prince after the Dark Prince is dead. Here he goes in for the uh, bomber and the Dark Prince. So I go immediately with Drill Bandit before we can get it back in cycle. He's got to waste his barbell early to counter the bandit. Cage is just a complete and utter panic. He goes for the bomber, but look at how much damage we've got. Now we've got the damage lead. We're also splitting him up super nicely. So now all of his counter push is not coming in one lane. If it's all coming in one lane, I'm in trouble. Now he has to waste this tornado to kill the mother witch. Otherwise, he can't push. And if he wastes the tornado, now he can't push anyway. He goes in for literally a naked graveyard. Cannon cart with a bandit easily helping out. Cannon cart's actually going to be able to go up and kill this brawler too. Go for a uh, dark prince to try and save the uh, cannon cart a little bit. We, we fail. Now it's going to be split lane time. We do not want to be going same lane as him. Cannon cart is not going to kill the bomber, but the bandit is going to go ahead and dash in and kill the bomber. Bandit's going to get on tower. We are solidly in the damage lead. But every time I keep splitting him up, even though I'm playing in both lanes, I'm splitting him up. That is really important, even though I don't have much damage. We can go for a Dark Prince low. We can go for a Mother Witch. Ewas is going to kite the Baby Dragon. That was like his only way of winning is if that Baby Dragon started splashing. I go for a Bandit immediately knowing that he's spamming. He has to spend a Bomber. Very, very, very nice Bandit right there. That was a really, really good Bandit knowing I could defend and also putting on the pressure just to make sure. And he's going to give up and let me take the win. Just a basically a phenomenal game. So many small things that I did correctly there. Almost of my split lane pressure was just absolutely pristine in my opinion. I'm, I'm hyping myself up because I think I deserve to be hyped up now. It's been a long time coming for the GT. I'm going to come back at you guys with a new video tomorrow. Probably going to be playing some P.E.K.K.A. Ram Riders. So if you're excited for that, hit the like button. Hit the subscribe button. Comment down below. And I will see you in the next video.